Hi, I'm Saish, and I build the infra that runs WhatsApp calls. Hi, I'm Yi. I build the infra for Messenger and Instagram calls. We both specialize in building systems for real-time communication. And we both work closely with each other to improve the call quality of, for all our users across the family of apps. And today, we're going to talk to you about improving international calls. I remember the first time I was on an international call. I was a young kid, probably around six, crammed into a public phone booth with my whole family. We were calling relatives overseas. Uh, an LED display over the phone showed us in real time how much the call was costing us. It was ticking down precious minutes faster than I'd like. I don't remember the exact details of the conversation, but I clearly remember that the voices on the other end felt distant and muffled. And just a few minutes of the call cost us more than several ice cream cones. With the internet, international calling has come a long way. Calling apps like WhatsApp, Messenger, and Instagram enable us to call anyone anywhere in the world for little to no cost. So much so that today, one in every five calls on our apps is an international call. That's about half a billion international calls a day, which is a staggering number. And while much of the focus over the years has been on driving down the cost of international calls, industry-wide progress on call quality has been lagging. Our analysis shows us that international calls are 20% more likely to be rated as bad by our users. So why is this? Not only are international calls more prone to quality issues, the technical challenges surrounding international calls are much more complex to solve. Let us see why some of these issues are so specific to international calls. Calls routed over the public internet have to deal with the limitations of the internet. Larger distances mean longer network paths and much more network hops. This leads to high latency and higher chances of packet loss and jitter. High latency manifests itself in the form of conversation lag. High packet loss can lead to video freezes and audio stalls. Other network issues like network congestion and jitter are also more likely to happen on international calls. Last year, we made significant investments in improving international calls at Meta, and this resulted in some impressive wins. During this talk, we will share with you how we were able to reduce network latency, improve bit rates, and reduce video freezes on international calls. For some country pairs, these improvements were in double digit percentages. Before we get into the details of the new architecture, it will help to understand some of the basics of how calling works. Then we can go over the old architecture and see why it needed a redesign in the first place. E will help go over these topics first, and then I'll come back a little later to talk about the new architecture that now serves international calls. Over to you, Yi. Thanks, Saish. Audio and video calls, like you may have guessed, are made up almost entirely of audio and video packets being exchanged between users in a call. Many devices connect to the internet are behind the network element, like a router or NAT. This can prevent them from establishing a direct connection with each other. Therefore, this makes it necessary to have a middleman or calling relay to help with this exchange of media packets. A calling relay sits in the middle and acts like a proxy between users and in a call. Each user in a call transmits media to relay, which in turn forwards it to all the peers. In an audio call, each user transmits just one media stream. But in a video call, each user transmits two streams, one for audio and one for video. Because the relay processes all the media packets, it is in a unique position to see all the packets. Then it can use this position to play a more active role to improve quality of the call. One of the advanced things that can, Relay can do is to reduce packet loss. Let's take a look how it happens. Alice and Bob on a call with each other. Alice sends a packet, which Relay, but get dropped by the network on the way to Bob. This is called downstream packet loss because this happened downstream of the Relay. Bob was expecting a packet here, but doesn't see it. So he sends some feedback to Alice about this missing packet. This feedback is called a negative acknowledgement or NAC. Normally, this NAC would travel back all the way to Alice, asking Alice to retransmit the packet. This is called retransmission from source, and it takes around one RTT, which is round trip time. However, a smart relay can help reduce this delay. 
it can catch packets that it sees. It can then intercept the next and respond to them by retransmitting the packet from the relay itself. This is called retransmission from the relay. Guess how much time does this save? It cuts the retransmission time in half, assuming the relay has equal distance to Alice and Bob. But what if the packet is lost on the first leg before it even reached to the relay? Again, the relay can be smart. It can detect the packet loss on behalf of Bob and send the neck back to Alice. Again, the retransmission time here will be cut by half, compared to if the relay had not been smart. There's a variety of the network conditions that relay can help. We already look at how the relay can deal with downstream and upstream packet loss. Now let's take a look at a few other examples. The relay is also able to pace packets. If the downstream network is congested, they can help relieve the sum of the congestion there. If the downstream network shows a high packet loss, the relay can proactively duplicate the packet, audio packets to reduce the chance of the audio stalls. We are still talking about all types of call here, but now let's take a look how the new challenges arise when we apply these same technologies to the new international calls. On international calls, the biggest difference is that Alice and Bob are far away from each other. Because of this distance, some of those congestion control techniques become a lot less effective. It takes much longer for the packet to be delivered over the longer distance. If the packet is lost, it is detected much later. Feedbacks like NAC takes much longer to reach the relay. And the retransmission, of course, takes longer to arrive. So reacting to network conditions like packet loss, it's much slower and less effective. And this is true for many other mechanisms on the relay, if we are talking about network congestion control and bandwidth estimation. Greater distance generally means more network hops. More hops leads to a higher chance of packet loss, network congestion, and the jitters. So on international calls, we have more network issues and reacting to them is much more difficult for the relay. So this is how it makes international calls so challenging. Now I will give it back to Saish to talk about how we redesign our architecture to address those challenges. Back to you, Saish. Thanks, Yi. We spent a better part of last year building and rolling out a significant change to our routing architecture. And this was specifically for international calls. We call this cross-relay routing. With cross-relay routing, we make one important change. We add another relay to the mix. Instead of picking a relay that's halfway between the two users, we now pick two relays. Before we go into why two relays are better than one, it is important to understand how we pick these relays. Meta has hundreds of relays worldwide. In order to pick relays for calls, we maintain a large map of network latencies. This map contains the latency from every one of our relays to every network in the world. To pick two relays for an international call, we pick a relay that is closest to each user in terms of network latency. This style of picking relays has a rather surprising impact on call quality. Let us see why. Let's st first start with an example of downstream packet loss. Every packet from Alice now traverses two relays to reach Bob. With the simple change of the additional relay, we have now increased the retransmission points from two to three. We can retransmit packets from relay two or relay one or from the source. When the packet loss is on the last leg, then the relay closest to Bob retransmits the lost packet. This is significantly faster than before. In fact, because this is the relay that is closest to Bob, packet recovery times are now on par with local calls. What about upstream packet loss? That is, if the packet got lost on the way to Relay 1. In this case, Relay 1 generates a NAC, which results in a much quicker retransmission than before. This shrinks retransmission time to be on par with local calls again. This is great, isn't it? But you might still wonder, the packet could get dropped between Relay 1 and 2. After all, that is the longest leg of the network path. So surely we'll run into the same issues as before if that happens. Now this is where it gets really interesting. 
because these relays are part of Meta's infra, we have a lot more control over the network that connects them. And we have designed these networks to be of much higher quality. They are much more stable and high performing than the public internet. We call these network connections the Meta Backbone. Meta has a global backbone network that spans pretty much the whole world and connects all of our relays worldwide. These links are dedicated for Meta use and they were originally built to support our content delivery network. The backbone provides superior network characteristics like lower latency and lower packet loss. This makes it perfect for carrying real-time traffic. So in summary, by using a much higher quality network between Relay 1 and Relay 2, we can significantly reduce the chances of packet loss over the largest portion of the network path of the call. Relying on this existing network gives a big boost to international call quality. And this is great for international one-on-one -on -one calls. But group calls are another beast. I'll now hand it back to Yi to talk about how we can further enhance this architecture for group calls. Thanks, Saish. Like Saish said, group calls add a bunch of new complexities. Many of those complexities are inherited from one-on-one -on -one calls, but get more complicated on group calls, especially on international ones. First, group calls has more users, which translate into more video and audio streams. More streams generally increase the chance of congestion. We need more advanced ad congestion control algorithms to react faster and address congestions more efficiently. Second, Different users on different networks. This means there's a wide variety of network conditions. There's no single bit rate or algorithm that can be optimal for all the users. Our algorithm needs to work with congestion control on a per user level rather than a per call level. Finally, in an international group calls, users can be in two, three, or even more regions. This makes it a challenge to assign relays to a call. Assign too few relays to a call would mean we don't benefit from the new architecture. But assign too many relays to a call can increase the complexity a lot. In our previous group call architecture, we use a single relay server. All the users connect to the same relay. And the relay was responsible for transmitting media packets to all the users in the call in a selected forwarding way. In international group calls, User could be spread across multiple regions across the world with a higher latency between them. We can sure apply the same cross relay architecture to group calls as well. First, we assign multiple relays to a call that enable cross relay routing. We assign one relay in each region of that user. We can call those relays local relays. They may not necessarily to be the relay closest to the user like them in one-on-one -on -one international calls. Assign too many relays to a call can make the system and algorithm very complicated. Second, we assign a central relay to the call. All the local relays forward the packet to a central relay. The central relay has a view of an entire call and can make a centralized decisions. In terms of the algorithms, Moving congestion control algorithm to the local relays is most effective. They detect and react to network conditions much faster. On the other end, selective forwarding algorithms can only function in a centralized way because they need a full view of the entire call, so they can only run in a central relay. Now, let's take a look at the congestion control algorithms. The local relay is mainly responsible for downstream and upstream congestion control. It deals with one or more users in the call, but not the whole call. It detects and reacts individual network conditions for each user. Let's take a look at a few examples. The pacer is responsible for managing the spacing between packets. This helps reduce jitter and packet loss on the downstream. Another example is the retransmitter, which also works on the downstream side. This is a responsible for caching packets and retransmitting them in case of packet loss. On the upstream, the retransmitter requester, it monitors the sequence numbers of received packets and spots missing packets, then generates a NAC for the missing packet and send it upstream. The central relay is responsible for selected forward. 
Select forwarding is the process of deciding where to send the packet and whether to send the packet. The central relay uses a variety of the inputs to make select forwarding decisions. Many of the inputs are feedbacks received from local relays. Let's take a look. Bandwidth allocator relies on the bandwidth estimates for individual users. These estimates are calculated on the local relays and sent to the central relay. The allocator uses those estimates to compute the optimal bandwidth allocation for each user. It can help adjust the bitrate of the call based on available bandwidth for entire session. The simul custom module deals with the inconsistent network conditions between users in a call. Only some users in call may have more congested networks. Local relays mirror this and send this information to central relay. The simul custom module then sends the low bitrate stream to the congested users and high bitrate to the users on the better network. This optimizes the call quality for each user based on their own network conditions. Now, I will let Saish go over the current state of the architecture and some of the results we have observed. Thanks, Yi. WhatsApp, Instagram, and Messenger have all benefited immensely from this new architecture. WhatsApp is rolling out this new architecture specifically for one-on-one -on -one calls, while Messenger and Instagram have fully rolled out this architecture for all group calls worldwide. We ran experiments to verify the results as we rolled out these architectural changes. We observed statistically significant improvements in many call quality metrics. The results did vary across products and across country pairs. Here is a glimpse into the kind of results that we saw. We were able to reduce feedback latency by over 40%. This made congestion control algorithms way more effective, which in turn improved call quality. Bandwidth estimation improved so much that video calls were able to use much higher bit rates, as much as 5% higher. Video freezes reduced significantly by up to 15% on certain products. If you could walk away with just one takeaway from this talk, it should be that congestion control mechanisms are far more effective when running closer to the user. And the effectiveness of these congestion control mechanisms can play an outsized role in call quality. To improve call quality, for international calls, we can use architectures like cross relays to move these mechanisms much closer to the end user. For Meta specifically, having more control over large parts of the network path further helps improve call quality. And there are security benefits to routing calls over a dedicated network. But there are downsides too. Adding more active hops results in increased resource utilization. This may not seem like much, but at Meta scale of billions of calls a day, these cost increases can be pretty significant. Some routes benefit a lot more than others from cross-relay routing. In fact, some routes might even see regressions from this architecture. This is because of oddities in the network path that packets take over long distances. We did find a few surprises like this during rollout, and that caused us to take a step back and then make our solutions much more adaptive than before. And finally, we have many more improvements in store in the years ahead which will help us build on the work that we have done so far. We are working on adding new forms of congestion control, as well as refining and optimizing the algorithms that we already have. We are also working on ways to improve the security of cross-relay traffic using protocols like QUIC. We will continue to work on improving the quality of international calls in our mission to help connect the world a little better.